Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about emphysema. So emphysema, it is a type of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which is defined as an abnormal permanent enlargement of air spaces. So there is permanent enlargement of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles along with the destruction of the alveolar walls. So I have written these three D's in order for you to remember it very easily. The, these three D are distal dilatation and destruction so basically there is permanent enlargement that is dilatation of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles along with destruction of the alveolar walls so this is the basic definition of emphysema so what are the etiological factors or you can say the most common causes of this emphysema or this disease is the most common etiological factor is smoking so smoking tobacco smoking cigarette or any kind of smoking is the most common cause for emphysema. Also, gen genetics plays an important role like example alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. If the patient is having alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, then he can also have emphysema. Or there can be air pollution of any form. Example, long exposure to chemical fumes, dust, vapors, gases, burning wood, smoke, etc. Long exposure of these irritants to the patient can lead to emphysema. So now let us look at the main symptoms of emphysema. So what are the major symptoms? So the most common complaint that patient present with is dyspnea, that is shortness of breath, which usually gets worse with activity. Also there is cuff with mucus and sputum, although it is very rare. Cause this will be happening or this will be a major symptom in case of chronic bronchitis. Patient will also complain about rapid breathing, chronic fatigue, patient is always tired despite of having a good sleep and good nutrition, still patient is always tired. Chest tightness will be there and the barrel shaped chest is a characteristic feature which comes usually in the later stages of this disease and these patients are also known as pink puffers. So why they are called pink puffers? Because in order to expel the oxygen which is trapped in the distal dilated parts of the air sacs, they breathe through pursed lips. So this will increase the airway pressure and in order to prevent the airway collapse. So the airways don't collapse. So whenever the patient do this and the patient is not doing this for one time or two time, he is doing this constantly throughout the day. So during this whole process, more amount of ATP is needed to breathe for the patient as compared to a normal person. So there is also loss of weight and this is also explained why there is chronic fatigue in these kind of patient. So this is the general definition, etiology and symptoms of emphysema. Now let us look at the classification of different type of emphysema. So how can we classify the types of emphysema in clinical settings or you can say in case of the different type of patients which come in the OPD settings. So emphysema can be divided into four subtypes out of which three are related to the anatomy of the lobules of the lungs and remaining one is associated with fibrosis. So the last one is associated with fibrosis which comes in the later stage of the disease. So I have tried to uh, make a diagram here for you to understand but my diagram is not very good so <laughs> just see this is the terminal bronchiole and this is the respiratory bronchiole and these are the alveoli these are the alveoli I have to I try to draw it but uh, I hope you are understanding it so this is the alveolar duct and this whole area is acinus so by this diagram only we can understand that all the types of emphysema so let us look at one by one so first of all the first type of uh, subtype you can say of emphysema is centriacinar so what is centriacinar emphysema so centriacinar emphysema as you can see area around the terminal bronchiole i have already told you the terminal bronchiole is here this is the terminal bronchiole so the area around the terminal bronchiole and the first respiratory bronchiole is affected so this is the respiratory bronchiole and this is the terminal bronchiole. So the area, this area will be affected in centri SNR, this area. So I have already shaded the area which are affected in different types of subtypes of emphysema. So the area around the terminal bronchiole and first respiratory bronchiole is affected. And it is usually the most common type 
of uh, emphysema which are seen in the clinical setting and also it is most commonly seen in heavy smokers so as we already know smoking is the most common cause hence the most common type is also centria sinar because is centria sinar the most common cause for centria sinar type of emphysema is due to smoking and these are usually present mostly in the upper lobes of the lungs so in lungs we have upper lobe and lower lobe so these are present the centria sinar type of emphysema is seen usually in the upper uh, lobes of the lungs now let us look at the second one panacinar panacinar as you can see i have uh, shaded the entire area so entire acinus is dilated and affected so this entire acinus which i have shown you earlier from the respiratory bronchiole up till the last alveoli the whole area will be affected so why this whole area is affected this is usually due to the genetic predisposition that i have already discussed to you the it in the etiology that if the patient is having alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency then it can lead to this kind of emphysema panacinar emphysema in which entire acinus is dilated and affected it is usually present in the lower lobes of the lungs third type is paraseptal so paraseptal as the name suggests distal most part of the respiratory tree next to septum it is already written septal so next to septum the distal most part this the distal most part will be affected and <coughs> emphymatous change adjacent to the pleura so basically this is the last part of the lung from after here the pleura the lung pleura will be there so the emphysematous change will be adjacent to the pleura and not usually associated with airflow airflow obstruction so in these kind of patient there is not usually airflow obstruction or the patient don't usually complain about it, that i am having difficulty in breathing what is a fourth type fourth type is the irregular type and uh, as you can see i have I shaded different different areas so this is an irregular distribution and these air space enlargement usually occurs with fibrosis and they occur in small foci and usually they are clinically insignificant so these are the four subtypes of emphysema out of which three the centriacinar panacinar and paraseptal are uh, directly related to the anatomy of the lobules of the lung while the fourth which is the irregular one is usually uh, associated with the fibrosis now let us see the pathophysiology of this disease so in the pathology what we will see that whenever the patient will come to us he will complain about uh, that uh, i am having difficulty in breathing so what are the basically things that will come to our mind we will ask him about his uh, smoking history or any history of uh, any chronic uh, insult to any dust uh, pollution or any pathogen so chronic tobacco smoking or any industrial pollution or there can be genetic predisposition like alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency so what this will lead to we will read in step by step so this chronic tobacco smoking damages respiratory epithelium and when this damages the respiratory epithelium there will be inflammation of the alveoli whenever there is inflammation in the alveoli these are the some substances which are released in our lungs so what are these substances these are leukotriene b4 will be increased interleukin 8 will be increased and tumor necrosis factor will be increased so these are basically the inflammatory mediators as per se you can say so whenever there is inflammation of the alveoli all these three will be increased and all these act as a chemotactic factors and whenever they act as a chemotactic factors there will be more and more inflammation that will induce the structural changes that will lead to the destruction of the alveolar wall in the similar cases the inflammation is going on in the alveoli there will be also neutrophil will also be increased and when this neutrophil will increase they will secrete more and more proteases to clear out any kind of harmful substances which are present in the lungs but they are also uh, this is basically a check mechanism as per you can say so they usually check if there is any harmful uh, uh, irritants or harmful substance which is damaging the lungs so in order to remove those harmful substance if they are present in a longer time frame they will damage the 
epithelium also they will damage the alveolar wall also so these proteases should be checked after some times for example they are called in by the neutrophils in order to uh, make our lungs healthy but after some time they will start destructing the alveolar wall so what this alpha 1 antitrypsin the genetic predisposition i have already told you the congenital alpha 1 antitrypsin so what is this alpha 1 antitrypsin basically does alpha 1 antitrypsin is a protease inhibitor it inhibits protein in normal persons it inhibits proteases so when there is alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency it will not be able to clear the proteases which will further lead to the destruction of the alveolar wall and this elastic tissue destruction whenever this elastic tissue destruction will be there the lung loses its elastic recoil lung is unable to pump uh, just the mechanism of lung is like this it will in inhale the air exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale like this so lungs loses its elastic recoil and there will be collapse of the respiratory bronchioles during expiration so i hope this small chart made you clear about the main pathology or you can say main pathophysiology i have not uh, written all the details in this part i have just tried to briefly summarize the major pathophysiology which is going on in case of emphysema and in their patients so let us look at the diagnosis perspective so if we look at the diagnosis of the emphysema we can see there is the most common or you can say uh, whenever the patient will come we will try to look first of all the physical examination for the symptom manifested the symptoms which is having for example the decrease in breath sounds will be there through stethoscope pursed lip breathing will be present or dyspnea the most common complaint will be there also spirometry is the mainstay of the diagnosis as in spirometry what we do we give bronchodilator to the patient and after the bronchodilator the fev1 to fvc ratio if it comes less than 0.7 then it is a confirmed diagnosis for emphysema we can also do ct scan to check out the destruction done at the distal part or in the alveolar epithelium as properly or we can always uh, see in the x-ray but x-ray are not so specific at as but there are in some patient we can see some signs for example flattened hemidiaphragm can be seen or there can be increased retrosternal air space barrel shaped chest can be present in later stages of the diseases also anterior post to posterior diameter ratio will be increased so these are the diagnostic criteria for emphysema now let us go through the main treatment or you can say mainstay of the treatment in case of emphysematic patient so smoking cessation the first thing that we have to do is stop the smoking of the patient smoking cessation is the most common thing no matter whatever the severity of the disease is it should not get any worse because continuous smoking cessation will lead to further increase in inflammation and further it will damage the alveoli more so first thing is smoking cessation second thing we can give beta agonist in beta agonist we have to give usually long acting beta agonist because they are more helpful they will uh, calm the patient or they will remove the symptoms of the patient for a longer period of time for example salmeterol formiterol and etc also we can give oxygen therapy to the patient which is really helpful and a muscarinic antagonist for example long acting muscarinic antagonist can be given example eclidinium and glycopyrrolate etc inhaled corticosteroids can also be given to uh, remove any kind of uh, these further worsening of symptoms so all these treatments there is no permanent cure for emphysema we can only facilitate the patient or we can only decrease his symptoms so inhaled corticosteroids can be given example butisonide mometasone flutoconazone so these are the ics which can be given and these three laba lama and ics these are usually given at the same time so the combination of the beta agonist muscarinic agonist antagonist and inhaled corticosteroids are given to these patient in helping out to reduce their symptoms also antibiotics can be given for any kind of secondary infection because there is long term inflammation is going on in the alveoli and we don't know if it is 
Uh, the patient is also sometime having chronic bronchitis and emphysema both at the same time. So we have to give antibiotics for any kind of removal of any secondary infection. Also, alpha-1 antitrypsin augmentation therapy is given, but it is usually given in very, uh, you can say, in very advanced countries, not in very developing or uh, underdeveloped countries. These are not given like this will be, uh, this kind of therapy will, pre will be presented in like USA, Australia. So in such countries, this is present, not in many countries, this kind of uh, augmentation therapy is present. Pulmonary rehabilitation we can give to the patient. Also mechanical support, ventilation support can be given. This is basically non-invasive positive pressure ventilation is given to the patient. So without any invasive method we have to give BiPAP or positive pressure ventilation is given. This, this is really helpful for the patient in order to reduce his symptoms. Also, there is the last line of the treatment is lung volume reduction surgery can be given. Uh, the damaged part is removed or that lobe is removed or the part of the lobe is removed from the patient. Also, there is lung transplantation. So, this is all about the emphysema uh, that I have told you. The definition, etiology, symptoms, its classification, pathophysiology and diagnosis and treatment. So, I hope you like this video. Thank you so much.